Chemical injuries are true ocular emergencies and uh, it is the first treatment that we give to these patients. Uh, yeah, which actually determines how the eye is going to behave in the future. It is a, represents nearly 15% of all the trauma and the worst thing, they affect young individuals. As many of these cases, they can go for medical legal issues. So it's very important to be spot on as an ophthalmologist when it comes to documentation. Alkali injuries are twice as common as acid injuries and they are more devastating. There are multiple eti etiological agents, but if we talk about some common one, the most common alkali injury is lime or chuna. The most serious alkali injury is lye, which is, which is found in drainage cleaners. Then most common acid injury is H2SO4 in bleaches and car batteries. Most serious acid injury is hydrofluoric acid used in glass polishing. One of the published report from RP Center in pediatric age group, when it comes to chemical injury, it is chuna injury, which is the most common followed by toilet cleaner. As I said, alkali injuries are more severe, more devastating, more destructing, and the, there is a reason behind it. The increase in pH causes uh, the saponification of the membrane lipid. This leads to greater penetration into the ocular tissue. And if, it, if at all it reaches the ciliary body, ciliary body is actually the source of ascorbic acid, which is essential for collagen formation, which is again essential for the reparative process. So if ciliary body is affected, obviously the reparative process is going to get affected. On the other hand, acid, when they come in contact with some of the proteinaceous agent, they form a coagulum, which actually restricts the penetration, further penetration into the ocular tissue. In addition, they cause shortening and shrinkage of the collagen fibers, which can lead to rapid increase in intraocular pressure. In cases of alkali, the rise in intraocular pressure is because of destruction of the angle structure. There are multiple systems of classifying these chemical injuries. The question arises, why do we need to classify? The classification system is based on how much of tissue damage is there over the ocular surface. So if we know the amount of damage, we will be, you know, we will be more prepared to talk to the patient about the prognosis or what steps we need to take in the future. The first important classification was by Roper Hall. They considered limbal ischemia and corneal involvement. In any of the chemical injury classification, it is the limbal ischemia which has got the highest importance. So based on this, they divided this chemical injury grade 1 to grade 4. Grade 4 having the poor prognosis where half of the limbal ischemia is there. But this classification was given at a time when there was no facility of limbal stem cell transplantation. Now we know that with limbal stem cell trans transplantation, even with these so-called grade 4 injury can have good prognosis. And that was precisely the reason for having a revised classification and which was given by Dua et al. It is, it is still the most widely accepted classification of chemical injury. Here, they considered limbal ischemia along with conjunctival involvement because these are the two sites from where the you know, re-epithelialization process occurs. And what they did, they took grade 4 Roper Hull classification and divided that Four, grade 4 into 4, 5 and 6. So if you pay attention to this grade 4 here, here there is 50% of limbus damage and 50% of uh, conjunctival damage. And uh, as per Dua's classification, very poor is only when there is 100% of limbal involvement and 100% of conjunctival involvement. So now there is another classification which has been published in the recent IGO. It was given by SN group of people. This classification is known as EPICS classification. E stands here for epithelium, P stands for pressure, I stands for ischemia and X stands for exposure. They have this belief that it's not just limbus and the uh, cornea or the conjunctiva because there are so many other factors which are also here into action. So we need to have a combined classification system. So that was the idea of having EPICS classification. But here also the grading is exactly like Dua's classification. As you can see, this is this has been taken directly from Dua, Dua's publication. But in addition to that, they have considered bulbar conjunctiva separately, tarsal conjunctiva separately, and corneal epithelium separately. So epithelium has got all this component in addition to this limbus. Pressure, whether it is controlled or not, ischemia, how much of scleral ischemia is there and how much of globe which is exposed. And based on all this, the final annotation is given like this. Which eye is there? 
what is the grade of injury this will be as per the limbal uh, involvement pressure ischemia exposure similarly limbal epithelium conjunctival epithelium corneal and the tarsal this is actually an online grading chemical uh, injury grading system uh, the url is not there in the public domain but i believe this is going to be available to all of us in the next few months and based on this they have given an algorithm also for the management which is which we will discuss uh, in the next few slides so when it comes to managing this chemical injury the idea here is to restore the epithelium we want to control the inflammatory process because that is da very damaging at least in the initial stage then we want to support the reparative process and we want to prevent complication and how do we do, do this we treating we treat the patient in different phases but whatever we seen on the right side seven days three weeks these are the classical way of teaching it the days can you know can differ depending on our way of managing it but it as i said this is an emergency situation and the emergency man management needs to be completely clear to us the first treatment or the first idea here is to remove the offending substance and restore the physiological ph with the first fluid visit which is available to us and in one of the published report they have reported that in non hospital setup it is the tap water which is the most common solution which is used in hospital setup it is the ringer lactate which is most commonly used but the choice of solution basically depends on osmolarity we do not want to irrigate with a solution which is hyposmolar because otherwise the solution will have a tendency to enter into eye this will further increase the tissue edema so we want Uh, a, a, a solution which is kind of hyperosmolar so if we ha if i have to choose between normal saline rl and bss i would go for bss but that is a little costlier than the rl solution which is available to all of us but if we talk about the ideal solution we need to go for diphotarin quite hyperosmolar in addition it can neutralize both acid as well as alkaline without causing an exothermic reaction without creating a, any heat over the ocular surface that is important we need to take help of phylid speculum as and when required morgan lenses nasal cannula etc and then the question arises arises how long we should irrigate the ideal is again using a litmus paper but that is not commonly we have in our hands in our routine practice so minimum 30 minutes or minimum 3 liter of irrigating fluid should be used once we have done the irrigation re examine the patient particularly in lime injury we would i mean we will very frequently see it there like those lime particles embedded deeper in the upper fornix and they keep on eroding the ocular surface so it's very examined to you know do the double eversion if required but check the fornices and then we need to take a proper detailed history document everything again recheck and then grade the chemical injury the early phase treatment involves use of topical antibiotics to prevent secondary infection topical cycloplegics to relieve pain topical corticosteroid the frequency of which will depend on level of inflammation if i have a very severe injury chemical injury then i would go for prednisolone acetate in hourly dosing if required then topical or oral anti glaucoma medication my preference is oral the reason being i am already using so many topical medications topical sodium citrate the only available preparation in market is oral citrate by orolab they decrease inflammation by inhibiting the pmn degranulation topical tr substitute tetracycline 1% or oral doxycycline as they inhibit the collagenolysis my preference is oral doxy then tablet vitamin c 500 mg qid bcl as and when required others are just theoretical then comes the surgical management in early acute phase traditionally we have been doing amniotic membrane graft and tenons advancement we want to put amniotic we want to put a you know biological cover over it we want to use the trophic factors which is provided by that amniotic membrane we want to bring tenons forward because we want to bring vascularity in the area of damage so that the healing would be a little enhanced So for example in this case this particular portion was you know completely ischemic so we removed the scar tissue and uh, we cleaned the surface brought the uh, tenons forward the, we took uh, we put B, uh, amniotic and bcl but uh, recently not very re recently in the last uh, you know 4 5 years sn group again they have come up with this idea that we can do allogenic simple limbal epithelial transplantation in the early acute phase itself and why they recommend it they have this belief or the idea here is when there is grade 4 or injury beyond that when they when we do not have that limbal stem cell reservoir over the ocular surface then 
just by putting a, an amniotic membrane graft or just by bringing the tenons forward towards the limbus, how this is going to help. So what they did, they took grade 4 or worse injuries, fresh injury, less than one month old. They did the tenons management, they put an amniotic membrane graft and they took uh, these stem cells from donated fresh cornea, less than 48 hours old. And clinical picture they have uh, you know published and for visual rehabilitation again the autologous slit was performed then we need to keep revising our classification system if required we need to do a close follow-up whether it is it is completely healed or whether the defect is smaller than how it used to be there is absolutely no sign of healing or whether it is worsening so uh, we need to do according to that the further management also we need to taper the steroid and if we haven't done the surgery as yet we need to do the surgery if required if there is a sign of ischemia and other stuff then we need to go for repeat um, amg also at this stage so as i said earlier depending on the epics classification by sn there is this new algorithm also which uh, is about the management of acute ocular chemical injury published in the journal of ocular surface for any case of ocular injury, chemical injury, we need to go for irrigation and then classify these injuries as per the given classification system. If there is an ocular surface inflammation, give topical steroid. If there is a low intraocular pressure, because low intraocular pressure also delays healing, the reepithelialization process. So give systemic corticosteroid. If the intraocular pressure is high, give antiglaucoma medication. If the ischemia is localized less than 3 o'clock hour, we can observe. But if it is persistent beyond 7 to 10 days or if it is worsening, do a tenonplasty. If there is a generalized ischemia, do the tenonplasty right at the beginning. Look for the exposure. If the person cannot close his or her eyes, we need to take care of that. So wherever needed, go for partial or total tarsography. The idea here is to save the eye in cases of uh, total tarsography. If there is an epithelial defect and it is just a small corneal epithelial defect, putting a BCL will be sufficient. But if corneal epithelial defect with, is associated, associated with more than 50% of the bulbar conjunctival effect defect, less than 50% of bulbar conjunctiva plus cornea do AMG. But if more than 50% of bulbar conjunctiva plus cornea is gone, that means the limbal stem cells are going to be deficit. So in those cases, we need to go for the alloslet. If along with this, Tarsal conjunctiva is also involved, then we may need to go for the oral mucosa graft. That is how the algorithm is. In addition, if there is a sign of scleral melt and other uh, complications, we need to go for all the supportive treatment, do AMG, use tissue adhesive, do lamellar keratoplasty or PK as and whenever when it is required. The final phase involves, we need to continue the supportive treatment depending on the, you know, health of ocular surface. We need to prepare the surface. We need to take care of inflammation. We need to take care of the uh, lid. Because many a times a simple, you know, scar over the lid. For example, this was a molten uh, metal injury. And there was this scar at the tarsal conjunctiva, which was just not, not allowing this epithelium to heal. We simply removed it, put an amniotic membrane, not even a mucous membrane graft, and this healed well. So we need to prepare the surface for the future intervention or the future visual rehabilitation. That is the entire idea here. And the, that depends on what kind of surface we are dealing with. If we have a wet surface, unilateral LSED, go for autologous slit. If we have a bilateral or one-eyed patient, we may need to go for allogenic slit, but that requires systemic immunosuppression for a long time. And Or we can go for Boston K-Pro type 1. In cases of dry uh, surface, we have very few options. It's, it's all about K-Pro whether it is MOOCUP or type 2 Boston K-PRO or LVP or LUX, which are kind of, you know, almost similar pattern. So that is how it works. So if you ask him what is my take-home message from this entire thing, then it is the emergency management or the first treatment that we are giving to the patient is one of the important decision makers. In severe chemical injury, we should not keep the surgery reserved for latter stages as and when it is required, do it at that point of time. With this, I would like to say thank you. Thank you for being a part of uh, this IC. Thank you all the speakers. Thank you so much.